What's up guys? Today just making a quick update on the 6.7. I am currently in the middle of the installation of my SNS CP4 bypass kit. So I've been slowly plucking away at it. I got everything taken apart last night. And now first thing, getting home from work today, working at it again. I got new Motorcraft fuel filters for it. And I got her staged up here in the garage. That way I can have the heat since normally I'm out there freezing. I got the SMB intake off, fuel filter housing, charge pipe, upper and lower intake pieces. I'm gonna have to see, it has an EGR delete, as you can see by that plate. But in there, you can see from before it was deleted, it's pretty gunked up. So I'm gonna have to try and get at that with maybe some brake clean. But anyway, if I go over here, I'll show you guys I just picked up. They put this sick around upside down, but it looks like a Vavor brand. Tap side creeper, which has been doing the trick pretty good. And uh, now I'm going after that uh, filter. All right, since the last clip, I still have to clean that off. It's nighttime, like a long time of nighttime by now. So I'm not gonna be able to do that because I gotta wash them things outside. But we see here, here's what we're looking at. Next thing I gotta do is pull that FCA out of the CP4 pump and then hook up that line that goes over to this area and then put my intake stuff back on and then set up the actual filters, which is gonna be, I'm sure, really fun. But I do have that uh, little Jewish catch can on there that goes down to the ground for the CCV reroute and then the plug right there. So at least that's done. So uh, I guess I'll update you guys as I go along tomorrow. All right, so it's currently the next day and uh, I'm thinking my plan of attack here, the only things I'm gonna really be worried about cleaning is this lower intake manifold with all the gunk in it. This charge pipe here and this little plastic section are pretty nasty. I'm gonna take it to a car wash, that way it's a steam wash because I have that uh, normal power washer, but then I gotta drag out all the hoses and all that stuff and drain it all out so it don't freeze versus just driving into the car wash and just blasting it and walking away. Plus the car wash has got heated water. I gotta find it, but I just recently, when I cleaned the engine bay on this truck, used some purple power and it worked really good. So I'm probably just gonna do a power wash on these, soak them in purple power, power wash again, do that a couple times. And also I can just toss this now, this uh, filter for the CCV, since obviously mine's now deleted. So yeah, that's the next plan of attack. And then that can dry. In here, I got the heat going. I'll let them parts dry for a couple hours while I mess with installing that line into the CP4 that comes with the kit. All right, so steam wash with purple power did pretty good. Not 100% perfect, but especially like over here, you remember how thick that stuff was? Just a little staining left now. I think that's a pass for me. So let's get these home and let them dry. That way they could go back in the truck. Well, very unfortunately, after I just came all the way home from town, got the truck put away, etc., I thought there was only one Torx bit on that side where it's removed holding in the FCA, but it turns out there's another one back there, which I don't even think I need to show you guys, but I will. My setup is, uh, they're like sockets, and you can't, this is like the closest you're gonna get angle-wise, so that's not even gonna work, so I gotta go get something skinnier that's maybe a straight shot down so it looks like it's already time for a harbor freight run and driving to the town two times in a row which really sucks but i guess this is how it goes well i guess that's kind of weird i had to go out and get this tool special for this to get these two guys out and it gives you new ones with it obviously because with that new distribution block in there these wouldn't have enough room but you take the new ones are a normal Allen, which is like, I wish the old ones were because then I wouldn't have had to make that Harper Freight run. But I just tightened it in the orientation of this being straight down, just using my fingers on the edge of this until it was as tight as I could. That way I'm not doing too much torque because I'm not sure even if I did have a torque wrench, how I'd be able to get it in there because the socket ones don't work. But now just, I gotta make sure I plug this FCA back in Make sure that ain't going nowhere because the last thing I want is for that to not get a good connection. And then I have to take all this back apart. But nice SNS logo on there that we'll never see again with our lines coming up here. 
and I put the plugs back in. I did blow this out. Uh, I didn't seem to have anything come out, obviously, because these are supposed to already be clean, but I guess it's just added protection. The guy in the Thoroughbred Diesel video that I've been watching said to do that, so I did. I assume this is just going to get fed over here where the fuel lines are, and I believe now I have to put all this crap back on that I cleaned earlier, and uh, I guess I just got two new uh, bolts for the parts bin of miscellaneous junk. But uh, I think these parts are about dry. I'm about to eat lunch here first, too. And I also have this rubber plug here that is supposed to... Let's see, where am I looking at? It's supposed to go on right here because we don't have uh, our EGR inlet anymore. Which, by the way, there's, like, black residue still in there. But, like, the gunk is gone. And, like, it's, it's pretty clean, especially compared to what it was. So I think I just got to squeeze this guy on there. The kit didn't come with anything, but I did find... Uh, this radiator clamp in my parts piles down at the farm. So I'm gonna see if I could run this down tight just as added security to make sure that I don't fall off. I doubt it will, it looks like it's gonna be a hard squeeze, but I figured I might as well pop one of them on there too. I also did that for my CCB reroute hose. I don't know if I showed this yet, I think I already did, but you can see that block back there and right there you can see that radiator clamp right there to just to make sure it don't pop off. It didn't come with one and it, it was pretty hard to force that thing on. So I bet it'll be all right. But I figured that extra two seconds to put one of them on is worth it rather than having an issue down the road with that falling off. Okay, so here's my next little update. Um, when it came to putting this intake back on, at first I was kind of struggling getting the boot for the upper and lower on that turbo to line up. Also, you can see I got that rubber plug. I pushed it in. It won't come back out. I don't think that's going to matter. It's just you got to keep that whole plug for boost leaks, and that radiator clamp is going to hold around there nice and tight. And uh, the thoroughbred diesel video I watched, a really helpful tip is to have this end tight so the boot stays on the turbo, and this end loose so nothing on the intake. And then on the bottom one, do the opposite where it's attached to the intake, and not at the turbo and then it, you can get it in like very easy it took me two seconds and then i did run these down with an impact the bosch impact nice and tight uh with an extension on there and i did have to use a swivel to get to that back one there since this uh piping out of the turbo was in the way but the rest were just straight shot tight and then there's your i had to do these three bolts, there's two short ones right here and a longer one right there. And I tightened them down 10 millimeter with this uh, flex head ratchet on an adapter with an extension. And I just kind of did a click of the wrist kind of thing just to make sure they're on there. Uh, they do have a torque spec for this, but I don't have a torque wrench. So I figured I'll just get it tight without going ham on it. And uh, yeah, I think the next thing I got to do is get that upper plastic intake back on. I'm sure that's going to be the part that sucks, but whatever. And another thing I was going to mention, the guy in the video mentioned that the casting, which like is where you see lines like that on the bottom was going to hit the FCA sometimes and cause clearance issues. Mine, I could fit my finger between that FCA on the top of the pump and the metal of that lower intake so i was all right with that i also following along i got this uh little piece here assembled with the o-rings where our filter goes on so now i'm just gonna keep plucking away these instructions are actually pretty nice the thoroughbred diesel video is better but it's kind of nice to have this as a reference for the simple parts and the video is nice to have for little steps and tricks on how he gets stuff in there so i'm gonna keep plucking away at it and i'll let you guys know what's going on with it as I go down the road. As you can see, now I have my plastic upper intake in. There's that plug there and then like 15 bolts all the way around. And uh, this was not bad at all. There's little plastic feelers, the guy called them in the video, that allow the bolt to stay up until you push it down. That way I was able to keep all the bolts in the original spot because I wouldn't know if they're different length or not. And then I literally just set it down on the motor. I think I started like these three and then did two back there and two over there and got them down snug. And then I 
snug the rest down and then to tight do the final tight and i went around had to use extensions for some of it but i'd basically just hold the ratchet like this and uh do it like that i wasn't going to the end here and torquing on them this is like 89 inch pounds i believe is what the instructions said to torque that to and i as i said don't have a torque wrench so i figured that's the best thing i can do is just tighten it that way also on any this is obviously for a lawnmower not a diesel motor but like there's o-rings in here too and anywhere there was an o-ring that i put together i just dabbed a little bit of that on my finger and rubbed it on there it's just to keep them from getting dry. It don't have to be diesel oil. That little dot of oil in there is not going to throw anything off. It'll be all right. If you're worried about it, you could use actual diesel oil, though. It's just this is what I had already in the garage. So, yeah, I'm going to keep going and keep updating you guys as I go. Okay, so since the last clip, I have the filter and the lines ran. It was kind of confusing on the video and the instructions i guess you'll see if this worked for me this is i believe how it's supposed to go this one hooked in normally i had to take a little section out of this other one here that went from that red clip to here i had to take that out and then that line from the cp4 the top one goes straight into the outlet as you can see by the arrow on the filter then that bottom connection goes back to the red spot there where I took that other little part off. I'll show you it in a second on the workbench. And then this line here went, it was flipped around the other way onto that barb where that one there that I'm touching with my finger hooks to, you unhook that, flip it around, and then hooked the barb end of the new fitting into that line after it slipped around and run it right up to that side of the filter. And then both of these blue ends go to the filter and then this line here, I ran around the back until the black end hooked into that barb on the factory line. So I still gotta put all my intake stuff back on. But really quick here, I'm gonna turn the key to the on position for a minute here and make sure nothing's leaking first before I continue. Also, this probably ain't the best how-to video. I'd recommend reading the instructions SNS provides and Thoroughbred Diesel's video. This is just uh, me kind of documenting the process here. I'm not sure if I hear something leaking, actually. Maybe that's just the sound of it purging air. It sounds kind of weird, though. I really hope this thing ain't got no leaks. Those fittings are dry, up here is dry. I don't hear the noise anymore. Around the filter is dry. Look around down here. Here, I'm gonna shut the camera off and look around for a second. Especially where it hooks into the CP4 pump. Okay, so after looking around for a minute here at the flashlight, I'm not smelling any fuel. I'm not seeing anything wet, especially I was worried about where it goes into that pump because I figured knowing my luck, that'd be where it leaks since I'd have to take my intakes back off. But let me cycle the key again. It's like that's a noise I don't recognize ever hearing. But it ain't as loud this time. That's really weird. I hope I don't have nothing wrong. I'm not sure if you guys hear that hissing sound. That's weird. I guess I'm just gonna cycle the key a couple more times. Okay, so after doing that a couple times, it doesn't sound as bad. I think it's working air out of the system. The instructions say one 30 second cycle will be good. And I'm not gonna start it just yet because I wanna get the rest of my parts on. And when I do start it, as you could see, I had to push it back in neutral. So it's touching the door to fit this top side creeper. So when I'm done, I'm gonna have to uh, quickly, thought I heard something, Never mind. Quickly uh, slide this tap side creeper out, put it neutral, and push it forward a little so I can open the door up. But uh, underneath here, other than there is that little oil spot that I'm gonna have to clean up, which is from taking that uh, filter off the crankcase vent, the oil in there kind of dripped down, but I'm not seeing anything fuel related. I'm gonna look around one more time 
And if I don't see any fuel, I'm gonna put this back together, which should be a breeze. Other than I don't know where this connector goes and I don't know what connects down here. So I'm gonna have to actually, I spoke too soon. This red connector goes there. All right, that's in. Now I just don't know where this goes. I'm sure it has something to do with the piping I got left in. I'm gonna watch the rest of the video from Thoroughbred Diesel one more time just to refresh my memory on the last parts. And I should be, I just have to put that intake stuff back on and then I should be ready to try and start this thing and make sure we're all good. So I guess I'll just keep on letting you guys know as I go, like I've been doing. I'm in the middle of watching the rest of that video and I figured I mentioned to you guys Apparently these parts here, which I put in this bag, are only used on like a, a Luma Duty, so like a 17 plus, or it might have been 20, 20 plus, whatever, for the line. But I know for sure this is if you have an aluminum truck for where the filter mounts. So if you have those left over, that's okay. And uh, this is that line here that I disconnected and I put the plugs in it just so, cause there's a little fuel in here. But uh, this is the one I had to disconnect when I was talking about that earlier, if that helps. I'd I wouldn't go off me for instructions. I'd use Thoroughbred Diesel's video and these paper instructions, which you can also download. It's very helpful. Uh, I'm just kind of making a video of the journey here, and i got to put this away, too. I'm also going to blow out that uh, filter here while it's off. But this, shouldn't, this should be honestly not that bad. The whole thing wasn't really too bad of an install. I'd say the only things that kind of suck are getting... Um, all the bolts in the back of that top plastic intake piece, that takes quite a while and it's kind of tedious. These uh, lines over here, let me see if I can see what I'm talking about. For the dipsticks, getting around those were kind of tricky. Moving these out of the way where it's that stud here that holds that, also holds these. You got to take that off to get to that bolt down in there. That part kind of sucked. And... Uh, before I figured out the trick I was talking about with the lower intake boots, that almost sucked. And figuring out those lines, which if you're watching this doing it, hopefully that was helpful. It kind of took me a second to figure out what they were talking about. But now I got that done and this really, this whole job shouldn't have been very hard. I've, I'm, if I had to guess, I have maybe four hours into this maximum and I've been taking my time. You know, I power washed out the lower intake about to be blowing out the filters so this really isn't too bad at all and i'm not a professional i'm i've been a youtube mechanic on all my diesel trucks over the years uh doing whatever needed done but i'm still nowhere near professional i've never worked on a 6.7 before other than taking the exhaust off uh king ranch uh 2017 which i actually have on the channel ironically so if I can do it, I'm 18. If you're an adult looking to do this for your truck, you should have no problem. If I can do it, you can do it. So I'll keep you guys updated as I'm moving along here. All right, so now everything's officially back in. This wire here, I checked it was that CCV box I pulled off, so I just taped it up so I know water gets in there and shorts something else out and zip tied it to my new fuel line. So now this concludes everything under the hood of this. cycle the key I've done this like a lot of times hopefully she starts up I can hear the bell squeaking from me spilling cooling all over the dang thing Let's get this outside and let it run for a bit Hopefully I never make an update video on if this kit works or not because I don't have an issue. But I guess if I do have an issue, I'll be sure to let you guys know. And hopefully if I do, the disaster kit does its job. So that's my two cents. I think for sure CCB reroutes necessary, the deletes are necessary. And I'd say that bypass kit's definitely something I'd recommend getting if I was doing this again. And obviously I did it myself. So. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video.